Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Want to follow up on the video Austin and I did yesterday, which regarded response curves in your controller setup, and specifically pitch. That's probably where it makes the most sense to have a response curve, but you can put it on any axis that you want. So um, we kept it kind of simple. We just said, hey, look, if you want to dial back your sensitivity, just make a droopy kind of curve. And I'll link that video in the uh, video description. Now, I don't have a cameraman today, so uh, I'm going to be using my remote control. So if you look here on the uh, axis here for pitch on, this happens to be a Yoko, you can edit your response curve. And yesterday we talked about how you can make this response curve, you know, do all kinds of different things. Um, Sorry, that was my monitor blanking out for some reason. Um, one thing that people astutely pointed out is you can have more than one curve, excuse me, more than one dot on this curve. Um, because we had it somewhere, I don't know, like this. And so what that allows is for the first 70% of input on the uh, elevator axis, you're only going to get about 25% true movement on your elevator on the plane. Now if you come down here you have different types of curves. You have the cat mole rom, you have linear which is just makes it like a hard angle here and then you also have cubic for your curves. There's a couple we didn't talk about that. There's different types of curves and cubic is probably actually better because that lets it taper off at the end down here but one thing it does do is it makes it really flat down on this end. So what I want to do is uh, f take out some of this uh, severe flatness down here. And I'm actually going to add another point. I'm hitting the little plus symbol to add another point. And that will allow me finer grain control. And you can even put in multiple points. Uh, so let's say, for instance, I, wanted, I want a, a null zone. So whenever I'm using my uh, yoke, if I just move the yoke the tiniest little bit, I don't want anything to happen. I don't want any control to happen. Uh, sometimes this, this comes in handy in various scenarios. So you could create your own little null zone by simply taking this first point and dragging it all the way down to the bottom. And now for the first, let's say, 10% of input that I put into the elevator axis, nothing happens at all. So I can move this elevator axis 10% and nothing happens. And I can actually move the elevator axis and I can see how it, it follows along here. And then <clears throat> after that, it ramps up and then to about 35% input. And then once I've gone to 35% input, it sort of levels out a bit here and really doesn't start to pick back up again until 75% input on the elevator axis. So you can see you have a lot finer grain control. The other thing I like on this curve is it also levels off here at the top. It doesn't continue to go upward. You know, like I mentioned, the uh, global warming graph you see put around, whether you believe in that or not, um, that's the way that graph looks. So this sort of levels off so you don't get such a sudden um, reaction, for lack of a better term, whenever you um, are, are approaching the end of the elevator axis. So let me look down here. Again, I don't have a cameraman, so I'm trying to do all this on my own. You can see here I'm pushing in on the elevator. Ah, and then I hit a point, and it starts to accelerate. I don't know if you can see that or pick up on that or not, but I get to a certain point. It's about right there, and then it starts to accelerate, but then it starts to taper off again right at the very end. So there's the first point about there, and then, yeah. And so that's a lot, lot more smooth. And also, if I move this, I'm moving it 10%, and I'm not getting any movement out of the elevator axis at all. See, nothing is happening right here when I'm moving it this tiny little bit. And that's that null zone I set up. I'm not saying that's necessarily what you want to do. Um, may not be the mo most realistic thing in the world, but it is something you can set up if you decide, hey, I want a null zone in case, you know, I just move this thing the slightest little bit. I don't want 
the, uh, the controls to actually move. So that's how you set up multiple points on your response curve. It's not something we got into yesterday because of the, the limited time. The video was already pretty long. So um, yeah, if you want to get a little more advanced, um, you think X plane's too sensitive, go in, put in multiple points. And you can go ahead and stop here if you want, but I'll go in one more time and uh, I will look at the um, at another axis here. Let's look, I guess, at the, we have pedals set up. I'm gonna go over to the pedals and I'm gonna go to the yaw. And you can even do it with brakes, the toe brakes. If you feel like those are too sensitive, um, you can go like the left toe brake here is basically a line. Um, you can have it, you know, be sort of a droopy thing here and uh, maybe change it to cubic for your curve. Um, that might even not be a bad thing to do. So you can do that on each of your, um, each of your toe brakes. Make them a little more smooth if you like, and you can add multiple points as well. Um, but one thing people sometimes struggle with is the, uh, the pedals. So if you want to put in a little bit of smoothness on the pedals, you know, you can do that here probably would do cubic and I'd probably add another point and you know let those things ramp up kind of slowly because sometimes you get into um, a bit of an oscillation when you're trying to control the plane on the ground it's kind of hard because you can't feel you know any kind of g-forces or anything and I see a lot of people at least the first time they fly they wind up zigzagging back and forth and back and forth across the runway. And if you, you can smooth some of that out by editing the response curve on the yaw axis as well.